Okay, good morning everybody. Um, you're very welcome here today to the Music Capital C information session. My name is Deirdre Moynihan and I'm the Programs Manager at Music Network. We're delighted to see so many of you here today. There may be a few late comers, but we leave them join the session as they arrive. Uh, before we begin, uh, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Dublin City Arts Office for providing the space here for us to host the session uh, this morning, so that's very much appreciated. So the Music Capital Scheme, it's managed by Music Network and it's funded by the Department of Culture, Heritage and the Gael Cup. There are two distinct awards and this session today is going to cover both awards, so I'll be speaking about each award individually and also uh, covering areas which are common to both awards. I'm sure you probably all have a copy of the guidelines relevant to your own application in front of you now. If not, please take one uh, over on the right hand side there. And you'll see um, page numbers at the top right hand corner of some of the slides which have uh, relevant page numbers for your guidelines. So you'll be able to follow along as I'm talking about the various slides. So, what is the Music Capital Scheme? It provides support for the purchase of musical instruments. So we have Award 1, which is for non-professional performing groups. And the total funding available for Award 1 in 2019 is €163,400. Award 2 is for individual professional performing musicians. And the total funding available in 2019 for Award 2 is 82000 the application process for both awards is completely online. So if you visit musicnetwork.ie forward slash musicians forward slash funding, you'll be able to download the guidelines there for both awards. And while there, you can set up an account with the application portal. It's a very straightforward process. And once you have created your profile, you can log in and begin filling in the application form and uploading support materials. And the key thing for this year is that it can be done in stages. So you can save a draft as you go along and you don't have to do it all in one sitting. So that's a very handy feature that's been added this year. And then a key piece of information, of course, is the deadline, which is 2 p.m. Thursday, the 21st of March, 2019. So just be mindful of the date and the time. If we receive an application, after 2 p.m. on the date, it won't be accepted. So make sure you send in your applications um, well in advance of the deadline, just to be sure that there's no stress for you as, as the deadline approaches. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about Award 1, and then I'll talk about Award 2, and as I said, I'll then talk about areas common to both. So, Award 1, you can see on the right hand side uh, the numbers I referred to there, we're on page 1 and 2 of the guidelines at the moment. So first of all, the priorities of Award 1. You see seven counties listed there. That's Clare, Leash, Leitrim, Longford, Monaghan, Roscommon and Westmead. And so due to a low number of successful applications from these counties in previous uh, rounds of the Music Capital Scheme, these seven counties have been um, earmarked for um, prioritisation, so high quality applications from these seven counties will be prioritised in 2019 and the Department of Culture, Heritage and the Gaelic has allocated specific funding for this prioritisation. Another area that will be prioritised in 2019 um, relates to rapid areas, so applications from organisations whose primary focus relates to working with people based in government designated rapid areas have been prioritised for support as part of the Music Capital Scheme 2019. And if you look at the guidelines, there's a link there to uh, maps.hubble.ie. And if you click on that link, it'll bring up a map of Ireland. On the side, the right hand side of the screen, there's a pop up box. And if you select administrative boundaries from this pop up box and then scroll down the list, to tick rapid, the areas that are designated rapid areas will be highlighted on the map. So you can zoom in on to the map and right down to the street level and see if your area is within one of those designated rapid areas. So then moving on to who can apply. As we mentioned, it's non-professional performing groups. And you can see on page two of the guidelines, 
there is a table which outlines the variety of groups that can apply. It's really extensive. You know, you could be anything from a brass band to a musical society, a pop rock ensemble, a choir, um, a primary school, a post-primary school where your application relates to the non-core curricular activities within your school. You could be a venue. You know, the list is very extensive. So do check out that table there on page two. Your organisation must be based in the Republic of Ireland and you can be performing in any genre. And just one point to note is that instruments, you know, they must be used for rehearsal and tuition, but it's also very important that they're used in performance so that, you know, there's a public benefit for the wider community to hear these, uh, these uh, instruments being used in performance. And these performances, they can be formal or informal, or they might even be competition performances. So moving on to the conditions of Award 1 for all applicants. So as I mentioned, uh, you need to be based in the Republic of Ireland, and you also need to make regular use of the instruments in the Republic of Ireland. Now a key point is that you can apply for up to 75% of the instrument costs. So if you're applying for a violin, a student violin that's 100 euro, you can apply for 75 euro of the cost of that instrument. And just one point to note is that the total instrument costs must not exceed 25,000, um, which means the maximum possible award is 18,750. Now that's a very high amount and many people won't be applying for that, uh, that amount of award, but just to be aware of that, that is the maximum you can apply for, 18,750. Now a condition of the award means that you must demonstrate how the remaining 25% will be funded, and we'll refer to that again later on. Constituted organisation, so instruments must be owned by a constituted organisation, which operates as a not-for-profit organisation, a voluntary organisation, or a charitable body with registered charity number. In the case of a larger organisation, for example, uh, like Copus Kjolkorea, where there's a head office and there's also branches around the country, um, the constitution of the head office will suffice in that instance. Moving on to child vulnerable adults protection and welfare policies and procedures having these in place. Organisations who deliver programmes for children and young people under the age of 18 and or vulnerable adults are required to have adequate child vulnerable adult protection and welfare policies and procedures in place. And a key point to note is that these policies must relate specifically to your organisation or to your branch if you're part of a, lar a larger body. So the um, procedures of the head office need to be, a, they, they are sufficient, they need to be implemented in your own branch and be your own. Uh, policies and procedures. For example, you must have your own designated liaison person within your branch. So just to be clear on that, that that's very important. Now you must also, as a condition of the award, have a clear policy for the instrument use and the ongoing training and support of players. So that's tuition, rehearsals, performance opportunities, things like that. And the final condition there is that you'll need to provide information about where the instruments will be kept, where they'll be housed, also, who's going to insure the instrument? So you'll be asked to give the name and address of your insurance company and also your plans for the maintenance and repair of the instruments as these needs arise. Moving on to page three of the guidelines. Uh, just to refer to one point, it's not on the slide here, but at the top of that page you see eligible and ineligible expenditure. So in addition to musical instruments, there are certain items that are also eligible and certain items that are also ineligible. So I won't go through that table or those two tables, but uh, do check those out to make sure that any items you're applying for are in the eligible table. So to discuss ineligible applicants, music generation, or sorry, music, music education partnerships in receipt of music generation funding at the time of an application deadline are not eligible to apply. For-profit companies are not eligible. Also, individuals are not eligible to apply for Award 1. Organisations based outside of the Republic of Ireland are not eligible to apply. And previous awardees who have not complied with award conditions uh, will not be eligible to apply. So if you have received an award previously and you're not sure if you've been entirely compliant, do give us a call and we'd be happy to advise um, uh, in that situation. 
So ineligible applications, uh, those received after the deadline, uh, which again, 2 p.m. Thursday, the 21st of March, 2019, uh, that's the date to commit to memory, um, other ineligible applications would be if they're missing essential support <coughs> materials. And we're going to come to that in the next slide. So this is, that's a key point. You must submit all essential support materials. If your, award, if your application does not comply with conditions, which we just went through on the previous slide, um, if your request exceeds 75% of the total instrument cost. So just keep an eye on that in your financial section. And it, your application will also be ineligible if it relates to instruments already purchased. So you can have selected the instruments but not purchased them in order to apply for this award. And finally, if your application is incomplete or the finance information is incorrect or incomplete. So these are all reasons that your application may be deemed uh, ineligible, but I'm sure uh, none of these issues will apply to anybody here because you all uh, make sure to take heed of these. So, essential support materials. We're moving on to pages four and five of the guidelines. So the first of these, there are seven for award one. So you must include all of these within your application. So first of all, the history of the organization. So this would just be a document detailing the development of the organization since its establishment. And just to mention that in the case of primary schools or post-primary schools, this may focus just specifically on the development of the music program within the school. Uh, you must upload a list of your members of your board or your committee and uh, include the positions that each uh, member holds. Uh, if you own instruments currently, you must uh, uh, upload a list of the instruments that you currently own. Uh, number four is the declaration form. So that is a one-page document and you'll be able to download it from that link you saw at the beginning of the presentation and um, that's at Music Network. Uh, musicians funding and this form is uh, you use this form to basically declare that you have read, understood and accept all conditions related to award one as set out in the guidelines and a key point about it is it needs to be signed by two members of your organisation so it needs to be signed by the chairperson of the organisation and also by the individual taking responsibility for ensuring compliance um, with the award conditions and if that person is one and the same person, you need a second person from your organization to co-sign this declaration form. And that can be, for example, the treasurer or the finance manager. Now, audio and video recordings are also essential support materials. And you can submit up to three and three files as samples of your work. Uh, you could also submit, uh, you know, instead, uh, links to uh, audio and video files. Um, it's important that uh, the links are accessible. It may sound like an obvious point, but you know, if, it, if they're password protected and they're not public, you know, you need to send the password in, or otherwise the panel won't be able to uh, listen to your sound samples. So that's just something to keep an eye on and make sure you include that information. Uh, just to say, be really selective about what you submit. Um, you know, this is the panel's only opportunity to hear what you do. You know, what your performance is like. So make sure you submit files that showcase you know, what you do in the best possible light. If it's a long file, you know, if it's a 10 minute video and you think, oh, we sound great, or this is the bit I want people to hear is at five minutes, put in the start point and the end point and the panel will go directly to that in the panel meeting. So you know, time is limited to assess all the applications. So that's a really important point to be really clear and direct the panel to where you want them to listen to within the samples. Um, and also in terms of including recording details, so, so provide information about the name of the group, uh, what piece you're playing, uh, when it was recorded, things like that, just so they have a clear picture of what they're listening to. So then a key essential support materials, and this is something that you know is really important to understand, there's the mandatory number of quotations for the instruments that you intend to purchase. So all applications to the Music Capital Scheme must comply with public procurement guidelines. So this is something that everyone must adhere to. So what it means is that if the overall cost of the instruments is under 5,000, you must submit two quotations per instrument. So what that means if, for example, uh, you're a community orchestra 
and you want to apply for a violin, a viola, and a cello, you have to uh, submit two quotations for the violin from two separate dealers, two quotations for, for the viola, and two quotations for the cello. So just be really clear on that section. If the overall cost of the instruments is between 5,000 and 25,000, you must submit three quotations for each of those instruments. Um, the quotations can be in the form of emails or letters from the instrument dealers or makers. Um, they can also be, and this is often more applicable to maybe mass-produced instruments, they can be screenshots. So if you're planning to um, apply for funding for a keyboard from Thoman, for example, that website, you know, you'd find where that is, uh, I suppose, displayed on the website. It'll include probably a picture, make and model and specifications, and the cost of the instrument there. So you could take a screenshot of that and include that as a quotation. Uh, just one thing to note is that submitting links to websites is not permissible. So you can't just say, oh, Thoman website, that's where my instrument is. You know, you have to be more specific and submit the screenshot. And one other thing to notice is, is if the quotation is in a different currency, you know, if you're ordering something from uh, the UK or America, um, you need to provide a, a conversion a rate in euro for your budget section. So just to be, be sure that you do that um, if you're for the budget section. And last point is that shipping is ineligible. So shipping costs, if they're included in the quotation, you need to subtract those when you're doing your, your finance section. And the final, the seventh essential support material is uh, the biographies of artistic personnel. So this could be you know, the artistic director, it might be your regular tutors, visiting tutors who are giving um, you know, guest tuition, if you like, uh, to the participants in the program. You must include biographies of all artistic pers personnel. And finally, um, optional support materials. You can submit up to 10, and uh, these can be publicity materials, you know, press cuttings, reviews, adjudication sheets. If you've got a particularly glowing review um, uh, in a competition, they're really useful to include as an endorsement as well. And finally, confirmation of partnership funding, if that's already secured. That's not, uh, you know, you don't have to have that, but if you have it, it's good to include, you know, maybe a letter of confirmation uh, just to show that that has been secured. Okay, so we're going to switch now to award two and talk through the same areas. So for award two, who can apply? Well, individual professional performers, as we said, you must be aged 18 and over, so under 18s cannot apply to award two, and you can be performing in any genre. Uh, you must be resident in the Republic of Ireland, although certain exceptions um, can be made, but in these instances, Music Network would need to ensure that the outcomes of any such proposal would benefit the arts in the Republic of Ireland. And again, just to note that previous awardees, if you're not compliant with the award conditions, you cannot apply for this round, but do get in touch if you have any questions on that. Now the priority for award two, it relates to the public service in education dividend, which is the PSED, and it basically relates to um, applications from applicants who can demonstrate their participation in the public service and education dividend under the Arts and Education Charter have been prioritized for support in 2019. So the Arts and Education Charter states that individual artists funded from the public purse shall donate at least two hours per annum to a local education initiative. And what this basically means is if you donate two hours of your time, for example, teaching in a local education initiative, you then qualify as having participated in the public service and education dividend. So, for example, a local education initiative, it could be a school, it could be a music school, it could be a community group, you know, there's quite a broad range of local education initiatives. And um, for example, you could approach a local primary school and talk to the principal and say that you would be willing to donate two hours. They have to be voluntary, they, it can't be paid work. And you could say, you know, for example, you'd like to go in and teach the children for two hours, and then you would get a letter of confirmation of this arrangement from the principal and upload that as part of your application. And that means then you qualify 
uh, for participating in the public service in education dividend, and that gives you an additional prioritization in this award. So moving on to the conditions of award two for all applicants, in this case, up to 50%, 50% of the instrument cost will be awarded. And again, you must demonstrate how the remaining 50% will be funded. And just to mention as well, and this applies as well to award one, that this, this, this 50%, or in the case of award one, 75%, cannot include a discount from instrument suppliers. So just to be aware of that. And um, also, uh, using the instrument in the Republic of Ireland, so awarded musicians must make regularly, n regular use, not necessarily exclusive use, of the instrument in Ireland for at least three years. And finally, again, uh, you must indicate where the instrument will be kept, uh, who your insurance company is going to be, and your plans to maintain and repair the instruments. I should say that we're going to upload a PDF of these slides uh, so you'll have access to them online, just in case you don't want to take down everything that's, that's up here. And so just, just to let you know that we are going to do that uh, tomorrow. So check out our website and uh, Facebook page for a link to the PDF of these slides. Now, moving on to page three of the guidelines. Uh, there's a table on page three of the guidelines which uh, refers to eligible and ineligible expenditure. <coughs> So one thing to mention is that the instrument you're applying for, it must be your primary instrument or one in which you can demonstrate a clear track record of performance. And in addition to this instrument, there are these eligible and ineligible items uh, listed on page three of the guidelines. So do check out those tables again. And then ineligible applications, these are similar conditions to for award one. If it's received after the deadline, if they're missing essential support materials, we're going to come to that next. If it doesn't comply with the award conditions, if the request amount exceeds 50% of the total instrument cost, if it relates to instruments already purchased, and if the application and finance information is incomplete. So moving on to the essential support materials, there are four of these for award two. The first of these is a curriculum vitae. So your curriculum vitae should include details of your education and training, uh, your performance history, and really important to list the performance history in reverse chronological order so that the most relevant, the most recent information is seen by the panel first and then they can read down. Also include you know, names of groups and ensembles that you collaborate with. Um, all of these things uh, can be included in your curriculum meeting. The second essential support material is that you must include two quotations for the proposed instrument for purchase. These, again, they can be emails or letters from instrument dealers or makers, um, or they can be screenshots. And again, shipping is ineligible. Um, so applications, they must include two quotations from the instrument from at least two separate instrument dealers. But if in the case that you feel your instrument is a bespoke instrument and you know it's a one-off and there's nothing out there that's comparable to it, in this case, the second quotation should be for the nearest comparable instrument. You still must include two quotations. There is no exception to that. So if it's a bespoke instrument, you include a second quotation for the closest comparable instrument. Uh, again, the currency must be in euro, the same uh, points that I mentioned for award one in relation to that. Uh, and again, the third uh, essential support material is audio and video recordings. You can submit up to three MP3 files or links to audio and video files and also include recording information. Again, be really selective about what you include. Uh, the same points apply as I mentioned for award one. Put in start and end points. Make sure that, like it doesn't have to be a CD recording, but make sure that the um, uh, assessors are going to be able to hear your work. Because sometimes the quality is so uh, low that you know you might be a clarinetist and you're playing in an orchestra and you can't hear the clarinet in the recording. So just be be careful about what you submit. It sounds like common sense, but you know it's really disappointing if you have a really strong application and uh, you know the audio samples they're not possible to hear, so it's not possible to assess. So just, these are really key um, uh, samples. Finally, the four 
essential support material is a letter from a local education initiative if you're participating in the public service and education dividend. So this would be, you would confirm the arrangement for the donation of time. Uh, it has to be separate to pay teaching work and you would submit a letter um, outlining the agreement you have with whatever the, initiative, the local education initiative is. And finally then, optional support material. Up to 10 optional support material items can be submitted and like uh, as for award one, these can be publicity material, press cuttings, reviews, uh, uh, adjudication sheets. That's obviously not an exhaustive list. You can submit other things as well. These are just a couple of uh, points or, or ideas to get you started. So that's award two. And we're going to move on now to the application process, which is relevant and the same for award one and award two. So the application process, um, as I mentioned, uh, in order to begin your application process, process you visit musicnetwork.ie forward slash musicians forward slash funding. There you'll be able to download the guidelines document for your award, whether it's award one or award two. You create your account on the application portal. So there'll be a link on that page which brings you to a separate site where you can uh, create your account on the portal. You can fill in the online application form in stages. You can upload your essential and optional support materials in stages. You can save a draft and come back to it. Again, I know we've mentioned this a couple of times, but really it's so important. Submit the online application before the deadline, which is 21st of March at 2 p.m. And you know, it can get very busy on the site or something might happen that you don't have, you know, a support material you realize you actually don't have I wouldn't recommend leaving it until the day, you know, definitely a day or two in advance will reduce your stress levels all around. And uh, then just to mention that when you submit your application, you'll receive an automated confirmation email. And sometimes, you know, as we all know, with automated emails, they can go to your spam folder, depending on your spam settings. So once you've submitted, make sure you check if it isn't into your regular account or your regular inbox, check your spam folder and get in touch if there isn't uh, an automated email in there because if you submit it correctly, you will receive an automated email. And also, the results of assessment, they'll all be communicated to everyone uh, in June. Uh, so both the successful and unsuccessful awardees, everyone will receive notification by email in June. So keep an eye on your inbox and also check the spam folders. So just to look at a couple of aspects of the application form, and a couple of ways in which you'll be entering in information. So we mentioned a couple of times that you can complete your application form in stages. So if you want to do this, you know, you might have started it, done section one or two. Uh, how you save a draft is you scroll down to the end of the form and you'll see the save draft option there. When you're ready to apply, you need to agree to the terms and then click apply. But just be aware, if you click apply, you're in, you know, the application is sent in then there's no possible uh, way you can edit it after that. So just be really 100% sure that you're ready to submit when you click apply. On the right hand side here for short questions, they'll just be simple text boxes. You'll see for longer questions, you know, where more text is required, there will be expandable text boxes and there are word uh, count limitations there. So be mindful of those. If you go over the word count, you won't be able to submit your forms. You'll have to go back up and edit it. So just you may as well stay within the word count from the start, so you'll see those listed at the bottom of each text box. That's a that's a larger uh, question text box. There are also simple yes/no buttons to click, drop-down menus, for example, selecting your county of residency, and also then for submitting your essential support materials. That's a really easy process. Um, every time you're asked to do that, you'll see there are going to be acceptable file types listed. So it might be a PDF, an MP3, a doc, a docx. And also on the right hand side, and you'll see these uh, notes or tips um, which uh, provide additional clarification in relation to a lot of the questions. So you'll see those kind of helpful tips to the right hand side of many of the questions as you go through the form. So be sure to read them because they do provide you know, helpful guidance as you're going through it. And then you just click choose files and you can browse on your own computer uh, for the files you wish to upload. Um, so <coughs> before I go on to the assessment procedure, I'm just going to briefly uh, talk through uh, and give you an overview of what's involved in each form so that you are aware of what you'll be asked for. Um, so award one, 
This consists of six sections. The first section is for general information, and these will just be contact details and requested amount. Uh, section two relates to the organization's structure and governance. And so you'll be asked, uh, for example, to give a description of your organization so you can select from a list, you know, and select whether you're a choir, a community group, a venue, a music school, all of those kind of things. Um, you'll be asked when you're founded and how you're governed and constituted. So that relates to, you know, whether you're a voluntary and not-for-profit or, or a charitable organization with RCN. And um, you'll be asked to provide confirmation of the content of your governing document. And if you work with under-18s or vulnerable adults, you'll be asked to provide confirmation of the content of your policies. Now, you won't be asked to submit these documents at the time, but Music Network will reserve the right to request these documents from you at any time, so you must have them in place in your possession and that they're implemented. So just to be very clear about that. You'll also be asked questions uh, about funding, so how your organization is funded, whether it's through subscriptions, uh, sponsorship, um, charitable collections, it may very well be a combination of all of these. And also if you've received public funding uh, from other sources, how is this allocated within your organization? Then in, you're asked to upload a number of things in section two, and that's to upload the history of the organization, a list of your committee members and their positions, and also a list of instruments owned if applicable. So you're asked to upload things as you go through the sections. It's not all at the end of the application process. And you also upload the declaration form, which is available to download on Music Network's website. Uh, you also upload that in section two. In section three, uh, this relates to the organization's uh, activities and members. So the rapid area question is in there. Um, you know, whether your primary focus is working with people based in a rapid area. You're asked the number of members and the number of participants. So just to mention that the number of participants, uh, it could also include, you know, non-members who might attend your summer school or something like that. So that's what we mean by participants. Um, you're asked to expand um, about your information, provide additional information about your activities. So this could be, you know, classes, it could be comp Petitions, it could be charity work, your rehearsals, uh, your performances. In the case of your performances, you'll have an opportunity to upload up to uh, 15 uh, performances that have either happened in 2018 or will happen in 2019. And finally, in section three, uh, you're, you upload the biographies there and your audio and video recordings. Just to mention in relation to the biographies, make sure you submit a reasonable amount of information. You know, sometimes we get a one-liner, you know, Joe Murphy is a clarinet player and he teaches at our school. And that's not enough for the panel to know how good or bad <laughs> Joe Murphy is. So it sounds like an obvious thing, but you know, it does happen and it's a shame then because obviously this person is probably a great teacher and a great musician. Just provide at least a paragraph, if not two, about each um, uh, artistic personnel. So then moving on to section four, this relates to the instruments for purchase. So you list the instruments that you're applying for here and the cost, and remember to convert the cost to euro and exclude shipping uh, costs. You upload the mandatory number of quotations here, which is to comply with the public procurement guidelines. You also expand about how you plan to fund the other 25% of the cost. So this could be you know, for example, through a local authority grant, it might be fundraising, it might be sponsorship. It can be projected rather than confirmed. So it doesn't necessarily have to be confirmed, it's just, you know, outlining how you intend to raise the 25%. You're also asked to outline information relating to your need for the instruments. So this is where you would describe the impact on your organization that having these instruments would have. So, you know, it might enable you to attract new members, for example. It might mean that you can um, expand the range of activities that you can, that you offer, or, you know, it might allow existing members to develop further. You know, all of these are really important things which are, are you know, key to expand upon in your application. Uh, you're also asked in section four about the use of the instruments. So this is, you know, who will use them, what tuition plans do you have, 
Is there, for example, an instrument lending bank within your organization? And if so, how does this operate? And finally, in section four, you um, outline how you house the instruments and include the insurance company details and your plans for maintenance and repair. So then we're near to the end of the forum. Uh, section five relates to the support materials. And the first thing you see there is that you're asked to confirm that you have uploaded all of the essential support materials earlier in the form. So there's a checklist there to ensure that you don't miss anything. Um, so you need to check, uh, to check those if you have uploaded each of the essential support materials. And you'll need to have checked all of them because all seven need to be submitted. But it's just like a, a reminder in section five. And in section five, you also have the opportunity to upload the optional support materials. That's up to 10. And finally, the last section, this is an optional section. So it's, you know, a, an opportunity to provide some feedback. So we ask you, how did you hear about the scheme? And um, maybe to, to provide a gender breakdown for your organization. And if you'd like to offer any feedback in relation to the scheme for us. And just to be clear that the answers given here, they don't impact in any way on your application. So feel free to speak freely, although we would be delighted to hear nice things about Music Network <laughs> if you feel so inclined, but at that section is completely optional. And at that point, you can accept the terms and conditions and apply. So very straightforward. Um, we're going to just discuss in the same way um, Award 2. So the form, it also includes six sections. The first of these, again, is a general information section where you um, outline your contact details, the instrument you intend to purchase, and the requested amount. Uh, section two relates to your career. So you upload your CV here and your audio and video recordings. Um, you'll mention if you own additional instruments at the moment. Um, you're asked to provide a breakdown of your career. So in terms of you know, what percentage of your work roughly is as a solo artist, you know, what uh, percentage is collaborating with small ensembles, maybe you play in an orchestra, you know, all of these. So you have to kind of provide a breakdown of that and to let us know if you think that this is the pattern that will continue over the next three years and also how much of your performances you expect to take place in Ireland over the next three years. Um, you also uh, have an opportunity, like in Award 1, to list um, planned and previous performances in 2018 and 2019, but in Award 2 you can list up to 20. Um, so that's Section 2. Section 3 relates to the instruments for purchase. So have you selected the instrument? And if not, how you plan to source the instrument and how long you expect it to take uh, you to source the instrument. You upload the two quotations here in Section 3. Uh, you also uh, outline how you plan to fund the other 50% of the instrument, you know, whether that's personal savings, it might be a loan, um, might be uh, concerts that you have lined up or gigs you've lined up and you know, you know you're going to uh, build up X amount of funding from that. So you know the way you plan to cover the other 50% of the instrument cost. And a really key point is you're asked to explain the difference that this instrument will make to you as an artist. You know, will it help your career develop further? Will it help you to become maybe a more advanced player? You know, maybe your current instrument is holding you back in some way. You know, it, it's not allowing you to, uh, I suppose, reach your full potential. All of those things. So that's a really important question because it demonstrates the need you have for this particular instrument. And finally, you're asked to uh, outline the insurance company details and where the instrument will be housed. Section four relates to the PSEB question. So if you're participating in this, you must list the arrangements and upload the document here uh, where you have received confirmation from the um, local education initiative. Section five is where you confirm that you've uploaded the essential support materials and you upload your optional support materials. And fi finally then section six uh, is the optional um, section, which is the same as I outlined for award two, for award one, sorry. So that is an overview of both forms. Um, we come now to a key point, which is uh, this is uh, the assessment procedure. And for award one, the selection criteria, um, this is a really important thing to take note of. Um, you know, you need to look at these, there's eight selection criteria and they're equally weighted. Um, 
you can see them all listed there, and won't read them out, but um, you need to really consider that your application takes all of these criteria into account, because this is the basis on which your application will be assessed by the panel. So make sure that you know it focuses on this, these criteria and that it addresses them all. Um, so that's a really important uh, thing to be aware of. So I would read through those a number of times and, and make sure that uh, your application uh, takes these into consideration. For award two, the selection criteria are a little different and they're not equally weighted, which is really important. Again, you know, make sure that your award, that your application really focuses on these criteria and, and shows um, you know, how it addresses them. So applications will be based, uh, they'll be assessed based on the criteria listed below. So the first of these is really important. It's worth 50% of the uh, selection <coughs> criteria. Um, it's the track record of the applicant. And you can see uh, page seven of award two on uh, guidelines, uh, it outlines a little bit more about how you can detail uh, your track record and for award one in terms of uh, track records this is on page eight of that guidelines so the track record is worth 50 percent and just to mention that at the discretion of the panel an award may be offered to an applicant with a less significant track record if they show and demonstrate strong evidence of exceptional potential the demonstrated need for the instrument uh, that is allocated 25 percent and the proposals for the use of the instrument, including in the Republic of Ireland, is allocated 20%. The participation in the public service and education dividend is allocated 5%. Now you might look at that and see, think 5%, well that's not a huge amount. I don't know whether I'll bother doing that, but this is a really, really competitive award. And time and time again, you see the difference 5% can make when you have so many people who are very, there's very little between many of the applications. And this can be the difference, for example, in bringing you over the line to be funded or not. So I really, really would recommend that you um, explore possibilities for participating in the PSED. It's really, it can make all the difference at the end of the day, as I said, because it's such a competitive award. So now, we're nearly at the end. Um, conditions of the award for successful applicants. So first of all, just to mention, I did refer to briefly earlier that all applicants will receive notica notification in June of the outcome of their award, whether you're successful or unsuccessful. If you're unsuccessful, you can apply for feedback within the next two months. So within that two month period, we'll be delighted to provide feedback. You must apply within that two month period. And again, these notifications will come to everybody by email, so check your email and check your spam folder. Now, if you are successful, the conditions for successful applicants, so this is covering for both award one and award two, um, when, once you receive notification by email, you must write to Music Network within two weeks to arrange a drawdown of the award. Awards of over 10,000 will require tax clearance details. Any proposed change to the instrument for purchase must be approved by Music Network. So if you know your plans have changed in some way and you need to, for example, purchase a different model, just get in touch with us and you know we can just agree together that that's you know what uh, that, that you can go ahead and purchase that. Receipts for the instruments must be submitted to Music Network within six months of award one and within ten months of award two. So in terms of provision of annual reports, um, awarded musicians must provide annual reports to Music Network on the exact use of the instrument for three years from the date of the award. <coughs> and in terms of acknowledging the award, um, you're required to acknowledge the support of the Department of Culture, Heritage and the Grail Club, Music Network and the Arts Council in your biographical material from the date of the award for a period of three years. And you'll be sent the relevant logos and a template template for this acknowledgement text um, following confirmation of the award results. And finally, self-explanatory non-compliance with conditions of the award, obviously that award amount is refunded uh, back to Music Network and this is added to the fund for the next round of the Music Capital Scheme. So just to uh, complete this session uh, with some tips for applicants 
Um, so it may sound very obvious, but do read the music capital scheme guidelines a number of times from your award. You know, you may not take it all in the first time. Uh, there's a lot of detail there, so just to be clear that you don't miss anything. Really important to do not assume assessors are familiar with your work. You may be a well-known artist or a well-known school um, or a well-known group, but you know the panel may not necessarily be familiar. So that is where the audio visual samples and all of the information you provide about your organization, about yourself personally, are really key. So assume that people don't know <coughs> anything about you. Uh, so read the notes for each question on the application form. That's what I was referring to on the side, the right-hand side of the questions. Uh, the information in the application should be clear, concise and relevant. Just be mindful that the panel have a limited time to assess all applications. So the clearer and more concise you can be, the more advantageous it is for yourself because you get straight to the point and you don't, people don't have to read through maybe <coughs> unnecessary information. Um, again, the deadline 2pm Thursday 21st of March. Uh, if you're in doubt about anything, ask us now, whether it's here today, or you can email capitalscheme at musicnetwork.ie. You can also phone uh, the programs administrator, Sarah Cunningham, on 01475-0224. She will be available on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons. You can call at other times, but that's, they're the times when you will get to speak to Sarah, um, and we'll be happy to answer other questions, or questions at other times as well. And finally, um, you will see frequently asked questions in the user capital scheme award guidelines for both awards. So that's it. Um, that's the session on the music capital scheme 2019. Uh, I might just take a brief moment for a sip of water and then if you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer them. Thank you very much.